This screencast in our series of screencasts on balanced trees will introduce red black trees and how they represent both 2 4 trees and binary search trees. And here we are down at Jalape on the Big Island in Volcano National Park where people have balanced some trees upside down with carved faces. So red-black trees are binary search trees with some additional properties. First of all, they're called a red-black tree because each node is, has a color. We're going to use one bit of information to mark a tree as either red or black. In diagrams, we might indicate it by coloring the node red or the edge red. The root property is that the root is always black. The external property is that every leaf is black. And with these trees, leaves are always empty, but we always consider them as being there. The internal property is that if a node is red, like this one, then both of its children are black. So these two are black. And why this is the case will make sense once we see the correspondence of two four trees. This means that you cannot have two reds in a row. This one here cannot be red, because this one up here is red. The depth property is that all the paths from the node to the descendant leaves have the same number of black nodes. So that's known as the black height of the tree. So let's look at this here. We've got one here, two. Here we've got one, two, one, two, because of course that is not red. So. This has the same number of black links from the root node to the leaf, and that's going to be true for every node in the tree, not just the, the root node. So that will be the black height of the node. And it turns out that this will correspond to the height of the corresponding of the node and the corresponding 2-4 tree. We will return shortly to um, how these correspond to the 2-4 trees, but for now let's take a little diversion here to see how the uh, red-black trees are represented in the Corman textbook and look at some of these properties here. So here's a uh, red-black tree and we have the uh, color property which is that every node is either red or black and they're indicating in this textbook red with these lighter colored uh, nodes. Uh, the root property which is that the root here is black. The external property all the external leaves are black, all of these the internal property, if a node is red, then both its children are black. Um, so we'll see examples here. This is red, so these two are black. 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 And so on. So that means, again, there's no two reds in a row. And the depth property, all the paths from, the, from any given node to the descendant nodes have the same number of black nodes. Um, so again, you could just start counting here and say there's, if you're starting at the root, there's one, two, before you hit the leaf. Here we got one, two, before you hit the leaf. If you go this way, one, two, before you hit the leaf, and so on. A couple of quick points here about um, essentially shorthand in, in the visual representation used in the Corman text that actually also corresponds to um, computer representations. So rather than having all of these nil nodes that we had up here, which would kind of proliferate and you'd have to check for them all separately, we're going to instead, uh, we're going to represent all those leaf nodes with a single uh, nil node, t dot nil. So we just have one object we can check for equality to to tell that we've reached one of these empty leaf nodes. And the other point is that we usually don't bother drawing this node. We're going to um, just leave it out, you know, because we know that it's there. So as I noted in the previous screencast, we don't actually operate directly on 2-4 tree representations. It would be kind of tedious to do so, because we would have to have different kinds of nodes for, you know, different data structures for a node having just one key. You know, you see you need the you need the key and its data and the left and the right child, but this one would be bigger because it would need to store two keys and three children and whatever data associated with the two keys and then this node would be even bigger so you'd have all these different 
uh, kinds of nodes, which would be awkward. So it turns out there's a very clean mapping from two four tree nodes to red black tree subtrees. So a single a two four tree with a single key, in other words, a two node, is simply represented as a single node in the red black tree, which importantly is black, because black is going to represent the a given node, and red is going to represent members of that node. So here we have a node. Um, with two keys in it, uh, three and five, and we're going to represent that using one of these two structures. And this is one of the things that makes the code kind of complex because there's symmetries, there's alternate cases, but we can either have the five or the three be the black node and the other one is red. And the redness indicates that the red is a member of the same two four tree node as the its parent, the black node. So this is really important here. The red nodes and the links from their parents capture the internal structure of a 2-3 node. So these red nodes, red links here say this 3 is part of the same thing as this 5 and the same thing here. And then um, you know, following that obviously over here we've got a 6 being the dominant node and a 2 and a 7 are uh, included in that node in the red black tree representation so that's indicated by two reds. Now black nodes and the links from their parents capture the structure of the 2-4 tree itself. So anything that's down below by these black links will be something that's actually corresponding to, um, like here we've got, um, you know, we've got three black links and there's always three black links here too. Here there's four black links and there's four black links here too. Now we can revisit some of these black, red black tree properties and maybe some of this will make a little bit more sense. The root property. Um, the root has to be black because it has to be the dominant node where everything starts. It can't be a part of another road, node because it's the root. Um, the external property, well that's just something that's true of both trees. The internal property is an interesting one. So if a node is red then both of its children are black. Well that's because a node being red means that it's part of this super node here. So if you try to put other red nodes down here, then you would be trying to pack in more nodes. You know, you'd be trying to stick a, a, a one in here and uh, pack in more keys, and uh, that's not allowed. And there's other reasons as well. This actually helps us maintain the uh, depth property, which is that uh, all the paths from the node to the descendant contain the same number of black nodes. So that's the black height of the tree. And that is going to get us the fact that if you count, you know, here there's one link there, one link there, one link there to whatever the children are, and here there's two links, but if we only count the black one, the black height of the node 5, say, uh, from here to this child is going to be the same as the black height of the node 5 from here to this child. So that's this depth property reflects the fact that the number of black nodes from the root to the tree in the red black tree is the same as the height of the node in the 2 4 tree. So it's really important to understand this correspondence. If you can really get this down, then you can do operations in the simpler 2 4 trees and then map them to the red black representation that has more special cases because of all these alternative ways of um, representing the same 2 4 tree. So just to recap that in terms of this tree we had here previously then, since this is a red node, then obviously the 2 and the 5 are really part of the same node in the 2-4 tree. Now the 2 has black links to the 1 and 3 and the 5 has a black link to the 7. So we have a 1, a 3, and a 7 here. And so the uh, number of black links from the 5 to a leaf in this tree is the same as the number of links from the 5 to the leaf in this tree. Of course, this has these things here as well implicitly. We often don't draw them. Now, I alluded to the fact before that red black trees are also binary search trees as well as being two four trees. So they satisfy the binary search tree property. For example, if we want to search for the uh, key 10 here, we go and look at the root, it's bigger. We look at this node, it's smaller. We look at this node, it's smaller, and uh, it's not there. If we want to search for seven, it's smaller than 9, it's bigger than 4, it's bigger than 6, um, here it is. Uh, so when we 
do our various operations, we're going to have to make sure that well, when we fix up the structure of the tree to correspond to 243 rep operations, we're going to have to make sure we also preserve these binary search tree property. And you will see in the textbook there's discussion of uh, rotations that will restructure the tree without disturbing the binary search tree ordering of the keys. Um, and this is one example here. I'll mark this one in yellow. So, you know, it's a binary search tree. You know, 9 is smaller than 11, 18 is bigger than 11, you know, 14 is between 11 and 18. Um, but for some reason, we might want to do a uh, rotation where we bring the 18 up and we drop the 11 down. And we're going to have to do it in such a manner. You can see that uh, 9 didn't have any children here, but then down here, 14, uh, sorry, 11, 11 picks up 14 as its child right here. And then the property is preserved. Uh, 11 is smaller than 18, 19 is bigger than 18, and so on. Uh, so these, a lot of the uh, complexity of red-black trees is we're simultaneously maintaining the 2-4 representation and the binary search tree representation, and we're doing it through these various tree rotations. And off, there's many different cases involved in insertion and deletion. So we will get to those insertion and deletion operations in the fourth screencast. Right here, we're just going to conclude with an observation about the height of red-black trees. So a simple theorem is a red-black tree storing n items has height theta of log n. I'm sure you're not surprised at this point. The uh, Corman textbook has a proof of, the, of this result, uh, that the height of a red-black tree storing n items is theta of log n that does not rely on 2,4 trees because they don't mention them at all. Now I've already proven it for 2,4 trees and I have now given you the correspondence between red, black, and 2,4 trees. So a red, black tree that you know, meets these requirements, corresponds to a 2,4 tree, uh, is going to get the same property uh, just by this correspondence. So let's, let's go through that. So let's let h be the height that we're trying to bound, a red, black tree with n items. And so property 4, which was the internal property, saying if a node is red, then both of its children are black. There, there can't be more red nodes on a simple path from the root to the leaf than there are black nodes. Because if you had more red nodes than black nodes, then you would have to have two red links in a row. So at, at, at least one half the nodes are black nodes. So therefore, the black height of the root of the tree is between h and h2. If h is the height of the red black tree, the black height of the tree is between h and h divided by 2 because you can't have less than half of them be black. Now, based on the observation that the black height of the red black tree corresponds to the, the height, we'll call it h prime, of the 2, 4 tree, um, and we've already shown that h prime is theta of log n, and now we know that h is no more than twice of h prime because of this internal property you can't have more than half the nodes be red node. Uh, that's only a constant difference, so h has to be also theta log n. So that's a fairly straightforward intuitive proof that relies on the previous proof I gave, but Corman gives a uh, more rigorous proof based strictly on the properties of red-black trees. But the big uh, result is this, that just like for the uh, two four trees, um, it's essentially, these essentially have inherited that property of being uh, log n time. So searching in a red-black tree will take big O of log n. We may find a key in an internal node, that's why it's not theta. And um, also we're going to find that insertion and deletion are log n, but that will be the topic of the next screencast. I have to show that you how they work and then make that argument. But now you can see that given the height is also log n, we're going to expect log n behavior there as well. So that concludes our examination, our introduction to red-black trees and our examination of their correspondence to 2, 4, and binary search trees. And also our image here is a tree balanced on the edge of a very deep pit on the south flank of Mauna Loa and some land that was acquired during the ta past 10 years by uh, Volcano National Park. And my uncle, who was a volunteer up there, took me up there to peer down into this pit that there's uh, reputed to be some dead cows in it. We could, couldn't really see the bottom.